Welcome to Sea Level English with Camille and this is Calvin. Hi. So we're going to be talking today about language learning. We're going to be trying to use our normal speed that we use when we talk to each other. You can be on the lookout for phrasal verbs, advanced expressions, and things like that. So let's get started with today's video. Let's go. If you want a transcript, you can just go ahead and click the link in the description and get a free transcript to this video because we might be speaking a little quickly. Yeah, sorry about that. If we get excited, <laughs> it just means that we're very passionate about language learning. Yeah. So to start off, what languages do you speak? I would say I speak uh, Spanish and Portuguese. And I know a little bit of Turkish and Italian. And obviously English is my native language. What about you, Camille? I know you speak like 10 languages now. <laughs> Not quite 10. So of course, English is my mother tongue. And then I learned Spanish with you. And then I learned Italian, Portuguese, and French on my own. And then I've been studying Turkish for a year. And it's the hardest one. She is definitely a lot more dedicated and disciplined in her studying of languages than me. Get all of my English books with my master book bundle at an amazing price. I like to try on languages where I study them for one to six months. And then if I'm like, nah, I want to move on, I move on. <laughs> Yeah, and when I commit to learning a language, I like to get to at least a solid B2 level before I start learning another language. I think it's really interesting how we both like languages, but we have different methods of learning. Although there are some overlaps, you know, we use a lot of the same tools like Duolingo or Memrise or, you know, some of these language apps. But uh, I guess the, the mentality and our personalities are different. And I think that's why, yeah, we can't exactly say, this is how you should learn a language, A, B, C, D, because you kind of have to figure it out on your own. Try things that work for you. Yeah, how do you start learning a language? I think it starts with an interest, right? Or maybe it's actually like, I got a job in a country and I have to learn this language in six months. So then it's more like, a necessity and those are two good drivers I think for learning learning a language and I think uh, the first step is having one of those yeah so that would be your like the reason for learning a language but how do you yeah. start from knowing zero <laughs> yeah that's a good question I always start with Duolingo just because it's free for one and it uh, helps you get uh, some quick wins so you're accomplishing these lessons, you know, it's gamified. So you feel like you're doing something, you're going somewhere with the language. So that's kind of my step one is, all right, I'm going into Duolingo right away to see how this language is. Yeah, I always use Duolingo as well. I'm very proud of my couple thousand day streak on there. And I do feel like it can't be the only resource, but it is a good one to start with. Because like you said, there's a lot of repetition and you can kind of get a feel for how the language works, which I like. Yes. Then I go to YouTube and I search beginner Turkish or whatever language I'm learning. And I look for all the beginner videos. I did realize though, beginner content is hard to create and there's not that many beginner videos for Turkish. They all mm. feel intermediate or advanced, even if they say beginner. So yeah, it's true. We just tried to create a beginner video and we realized we need to do a little better. <laughs> yes. Advanced intermediate content is a lot easier to create. Yes. So your step one is Duolingo. Your step two is searching YouTube for videos and people teaching that language. Yeah. A lot of input, a lot of listening, even if I don't understand. I really like Steve Kaufman's link program because you can read books or find interesting content on there and then get the translation for the premium if you pay. But it's helpful, especially in the beginning when you don't know anything. Yeah, yeah. I like to go onto Netflix and watch movies in those languages, even if my subtitles are in English. For one, language is not some disconnected thing you know it's connected to a culture and a people yeah, that's true 
Yeah, and so watching movies and things like that helps me envision this language in its context, or at least its fictional context in a movie. And that helps me kind of stay, stay motivated and get some input. So what would you say your biggest struggle is when it comes to language learning? There is a lot to learn. <laughs> My biggest struggle is when I look, yeah, when I look at the, all the things I have to learn, uh, I can, you know, feel like, oh, overwhelmed, I think, and then, you know, lose my drive. When I stay focused on step by step, okay, I'm going to do this lesson, I'm going to do that, and uh, not look at the big picture, that's, I think, a better mentality So yes, for raising young elephants. Yes. <laughs> herd of elephants running through the house. So I think for me, my biggest struggle is listening. People say speaking, but I can get to this point where I feel like I can speak and be understood, but I'm trying to understand people. Accents mm. are different depending on where people live. True. And it's a struggle. So that's one of the hardest things. Yes. Even knowing a language, but then going to another country that speaks it is a challenge. Like right now we're in Portugal. We learned more of a Brazilian variety of Portuguese. And so here it's a lot of shh, 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 shh. And uh, it's hard to understand right now. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so listening is always going to be kind of one of those last things I feel like that uh, you get in language learning and one of the hardest to, to get without tons and tons of input. Yeah, and immersion. And immersion yeah. is very helpful. I think you need immersion in the culture really just to get to that super advanced level. Yeah. On a digital side, you can always use like HelloTalk or Tandem and find a good language partner or go into the language parties. Um, both can be pretty addictive and time consuming, so be careful. Yeah. But they do expose you to a lot of locals talking to each other, especially, yeah. you know, if you're learning, you know, one of the more popular languages, you'll find a lot more rooms uh, on those apps. Yeah, and as a bonus, I've met over 15 of my language partners in real life. So that's a pretty cool just side thing that ends up happening because yeah. of my passion for language learning. Yeah, one of my best friends, Gabrielle from Brazil. Shout out. Hey, Gabrielle. <laughs> we met on Hello Talk, and then we met in person. Yeah. And I lived with his family for a bit. He lived with our family for a bit. Yeah. And it's been amazing. So there's a lot of fruit in language learning. And I hope you guys get to experience that as well. Totally. I think this is a topic we probably could extend for about an hour, but I'm trying to keep my videos a little shorter. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. But why don't you guys tell us how you learn a language? What are some of the things that you do in the beginning? And how many languages do you know? We would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for joining this conversation with us about language learning. Uh, yeah, until next time. Bye. Bye.